I was at the Equality or Independence Rally in Calgary, Alberta over the weekend. Maxime Bernier joined Derek Fildebrandt to talk to Albertans about his plan for pipelines and equalization. He came on stage to Paul Brandt's song, Alberta Bound, and spoke to Albertans who are teetering on the edge of separatism. Here are some of the highlights. First, scrap deal C-48. Yeah. Second, Scrap Bill C-69. <laughs> Third, sim simplify and streamline the process for approving pipeline construction. Yeah. <laughs> Four, find a private buyer for the Trans Mountain yeah. Pipeline. <laughs> And fifth, reassert federal jurisdiction over this issue when necessary by invoking section 9210 of our constitution. It was a fairly good turnout for the new Freedom Conservative Party. Max tends to be able to draw out pretty good crowds in Calgary. We managed to catch up with him and Derek Filderbrandt to ask them a few questions. You mentioned that you wanted to push through Aboriginal opposition to pipelines. Does that include uh, groups like the Office of the Wet'suwet'en Society, who is not actually a registered Indian band or anything of the sort? They're just funded by tides uh, and have large swaths of territory that pipelines need to get through. Would you consider pushing through that kind of opposition as well? Yeah, what I said, we need to do consultation. We need to try to have a project that will have the most support. But at the end, what I said, it is a decision by the federal government. You know, it is a decision by the federal government and the federal government has the power to use its constitutional power and, and, uh, and use the constitution the section 9210 to be sure that we'll be able to build a pipeline in this country. But that will be at only at the end. If we're not able to have a, a accord or, or support for from different communities. If we're not able, and we did a lot of consultation, the federal government must use that. So answer your question, at the end, it's the federal government who must decide and not special interest group. CNRL announced that there's going to be layoffs on the horizon if the oil supply management program continues. Do you hold Kenny to blame for making it so easy for Rachel Notley? Uh, Jason Kenny is the architect, spokesman, and uh, and lead propagandist for supply management of our oil and of our oil sector in Alberta. Uh, the NDP would have ne never dared impose supply management on oil production in Alberta if they didn't have the cover of the so-called conservatives telling them that that kind of uh, command and control socialism over the economy is okay. Jason Kenney was the very first politician to come out and say that the government should impose supply uh, uh, supply management on the oil industry and then of course Rachel Notley followed suit because it gave her the ideological cover to do so. Um, there is no way in hell Rachel Notley would have done so because that's the kind of stuff you see in Venezuela where governments directly intervene uh, in the market to say how much oil you're allowed to produce. That action has winners and losers of course some uh, some oil producers win out of that but a lot of people lose and they're primarily frontline blue-collar workers. People talk about frontline government workers all the time. But no one's talking about frontline blue-collar workers. Guys working drilling rigs, guys working service rigs, uh, guys who are out on the field. Cutting, cutting, um, cutting production of oil is never going to keep those guys in work. And so uh, the politicians, uh, Tory and NDP, who are supporting this, are directly responsible for potential job losses coming from CNRL now. Lots of the folks there were interested in his message on pipelines and equalization, but it seemed the majority of them actually wanted to talk about immigration, something that the leader of the Conservative Party, Andrew Scheer, has been shying away from recently. Here's what those folks had to say. So what brings you to Max's uh, rally here in Calgary today? Well, I, he's the only politician that in my lifetime that I've seen that's able to um, say what resonates with what I believe should be Done. I'm here today to uh, listen to Maxime and I think he's laid out his party platform in a fairly consistent and a clean way and I believe that he stands for what he says and that's the right thing for Canada right now. I was a uh, follow Trump campaign from 2015. I was always looking for somebody in Canada like him. So I find Maxime and then I joined PPC. 
Do you think that Maxime Bernier is Canada's Donald Trump? I think so. Andrew Scheer said a few days ago that he doesn't want to lower uh, the amount of immigrants that are coming into Canada. Trudeau said that he uh, doesn't want immigration to be a hot button issue in the election. Uh, and Maxime says he's the only candidate that wants to lower immigration. Do you agree with Max on that? I think I agree with Maxime and most people who are here, they actually understand that immigration is a key issue in Canada. You can't just have unbridled millions or hundreds of thousands of people coming into Canada. We need to look at this the way that it's been done in the past and be systematic about it. Don't just say that our doors are open and everybody that wants to come in is welcome. Uh, we've got to make sure that we keep Canada safe first and foremost. When we see what's happened in Kingston over the last 24 hours, I completely reject that and I feel fundamentally that the reason we've got those problems is because of haphazard immigration policies by political neophytes primarily led by socialist liberalism and we've got to counter that. We're a welcoming society, we want to welcome people, those people need to adhere to Canadian values and quite frankly if they're not prepared to do that they really need to ask themselves do you really want to come to Canada? I think you're going to run into a problem anytime you bring in a large amount of people that do not have the same belief, belief systems that you have so um, I think Kingston's a, a typical example of that. I don't know how you sweep that under the rug. Justin Trudeau might say that, that Canada doesn't have a core identity. Well, I know that there's a significant number of grandfathers, uh, great-grandfathers, that fought and died for what Canada's all about, and I, for one, am certainly not prepared to, to see that abrogated in any way, shape, or form. We're welcoming, we want to be welcoming, but we're not prepared to abrogate our security for our children and our grandchildren for the sake of that. So that was Derek Fildebrandt's largest rally to date, as I understand it. Around 150 people showed up to hear Maxime Bernier lay down the case for Confederation. I have a feeling that even though Justin Trudeau has pleaded not to make immigration a political issue in the upcoming election, Canadians are saying otherwise. For the Rebel.media, this is Kean Bexty. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the coverage. If you want to stay up to date with the latest news and the other side of the story, be sure to like this video, share it with your friends and family, and subscribe to us on YouTube. That way you'll never miss a thing.